Israel, Israel, Israel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Tuesday, October the 26th, 2021, and it's time for our regular meeting committee of the whole. Uh, we have several items on the agenda today. Um, do not expect us to go past lunch today for sure, so we do not arrange for that to happen. Uh, but the first item on the agenda today is the approval of minutes. The approval of minutes is for the committee of the whole meeting that we had on October the 12th, 2021. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. Any questions in regard to the committee of whole minutes for October 12th? Seeing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and be sent to the consent agenda. Item two is announcements. I'm not aware of any announcements that we have uh, specifically today. So we'll move on to appointments to authorities, boards, and commissions. Item 3A is appointments, a resolution submitting Matt Aston, Steve Kruger, and Bill Tiff as the slate of nominees to succeed Jim Adams on the Macon Bibb County Hospital Authority Board and submitting Myrtle Habersham, Eric Manson, and Andy Galloway as a slate of nominees to succeed Fred Snell on the Macon Bibb County Hospital Authority Board. This is a new agenda item. As you can tell displayed up there, if you remember our process is we, we receive a recommendation of three folks uh, from the hospital authority. Uh, the mayor at that point presents a slate to the commissioners, and they will choose one of those those folks for that board. Uh, this is uh, something that's set up by ordinance or statute, statute. by statute uh, that we've been following for a while. So this is a uh, second appointment we've made this year. So uh, that is my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Howell. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. So that motion carries. Will be sent to consent agenda. Item 3B is a resolution by Macon Bibb County Commission reappointing Liana Rogers as a member of the Region 5 Emergency Medical Services Council and for all other lawful purposes. As my motion, can I get a second? Second by Pro Tem Clark. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you. That motion carries. We have acceptance of grants, a resolution authorizing acceptance of fiscal year 2021 GEMA K-9 grant from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security in the amount of $3,000 with no local match to be used as Bibb County Sheriff's Office to provide care and equipment to the sheriff explosive ordinance detecting dogs. Uh, that is my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries will be sent to consent agenda. Item B is a resolution authorizing acceptance of grant funds from the Office of Justice Programs, fiscal year 2021, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program in amount of $87,224 with no local match to be used by the Bibb County Sheriff's Office for special investigations and drug unit training and supplies by the Bibb County Adult Felony Drug Court for Counselor Services. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner. Wilder, any questions in that regard? Here are no questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Be sent to consent agenda. Item C is an ordinance from the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to apply for a 2022 local maintenance and improvement grant, LMIG, in the amount of $2,127,465.09, authorizing the acceptance of said funds and appropriation funds for required local match plus additional funding of up to $688,770 ought to be paid from 2018 splash revenues. 2022 roads and bridges, LMEG line item, said application be approved, identifying the list of road projects to be funded thereby. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the roads program? Yes. Commissioner Clark has a motion. You have a second? Second by Commissioner Tillman. Commissioner Clark, you have a question or concern? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to clarification on how we're identifying the list of road projects is that the, from just just out of curiosity 
engineering department does the evaluation and gives the recommendation list. And for the last two months, I've sent those to you mm -hmm. ahead of time to make sure that you had any questions or wanted to add or change roles or anything like that. Yeah, that, that was what I was, I was wondering if that, those, that list and this list was connected. That's it's the all. same list. Okay, thank you. Well, basically, I wanted the uh, same answer as how we were coming up with them. I still want to voice my opinion. There's four streets in District 6. I rode down each of those this morning. Uh, I, you know, I just think we may need to look into some changes on that because each, uh, most of these roads, I had to ride down Columbus Road to get to them. Columbus Road's way far worse. I understand it's a lot more road, a lot more money, but that road is just getting horrendous. I'm sure that these people that uh, are gonna get their roads paid, most of them are small roads in a neighborhood. They're gonna be appreciative, but we have a whole lot worse concerns in District 6 than these roads. If you would, if you would forward me those, I'll see where they are in the evaluation process. If you just forward me the name of those roads. Am I, the ones that are, that are on the list or? No, the ones that you have concerns about. Would you like to be, uh, to see where they yeah. are in the process? Definitely, we have, we had done that earlier in the year, but the main two roads didn't even get consideration out of them. So you've already submitted those names? But Columbus Road and Knoxville Road's the two main. Uh, you know, part of the process is the evaluation of costs and, and distance and uh, timing. So I will look and see uh, where the other two are in, uh, in the process. So we, we try to spread it out and get the best bang for the buck. And so that's part of the uh, process also. Do we spread it out evenly between the districts or how are they doing that? Um, we try. Uh, if you would notice in the list, I do have it broken down by districts. So we do try to do that, but at the same time, we try to do the best cost analysis um, and, and work from that regard. So. Aaron, I mean, the, the numbers is divided by nine is 331,000. We're spending 180 in District 6. That, that's probably because one road in another district probably took that additional, whatever that difference is, to complete. In Columbus Road, we probably do the same. Thank you, Commissioner Wilder. Any additional questions in regard to this items? I think at some point, uh, Dr. Moffitt, since we have many questions on this, that perhaps we need to have a work session uh, on this particular program. I think uh, some of the newer commissioners are uh, not familiar with the exact process that we followed in the past over the years on this LMIG, and, and some folks at home as well, because we get these questions all the time about roads and make sure that we're fair and equitable across the whole county, how that need assessments work and how we determine this and how much input the commissioners uh, have uh, on getting their roads on this list as well. I think that'd be something that we could all talk about. So I appreciate you bringing that forward and I appreciate the questions this morning. Uh, we do have a motion and a second for item C. Um, at this time, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Got one nay on Commissioner Wilder, thank you. Uh, that motion carries. Item 5A is a resolution to approve the sale by 57 parcels of surplus real property as described herein to be auctioned by the Macon Bibb County Real Estate Broker to approve the minimal bid amounts for each property to authorize all sales in excess of the stated minimum bids without reserve. Uh, th this is something that's been going on for quite a while. Uh, you've selected in the past a person to handle all this, to place it for sale. The pricing information and RFP, I think, was done a while back, and, and the Stephanie Folsom was selected. We now have identified most of all those properties. We have a couple that we'll be talking to her about that we may not be permitted to sell, but that's something we'll, we'll discuss with her individually. Uh, this is a, uh, that's my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. Any question in regard to these items? Seeing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries will be sent to the consent agenda. Item B is a resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commissioner authorizing the mayor to execute a sixth addendum to the Master Solar Energy Procurement Agreement with Cherry Street Energy for the construction of new solar array project at the Macon Bibb County Thomas Jackson Juvenile Justice Service, located at 560 Oglethorpe Street, to provide solar power improvements with no added cost to Macon Bibb County and all lawful purposes. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Pro Tem Clark. Any questions concerning this item? Mr. Pro Tem Clark will have to be added to this item. Thank you, sir. 
We do have a motion and second, and no further questions. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and will be sent to consent agenda. Item A is a resolution to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with Meals on Wheels, Middle Georgia, to provide $100,000 in community development block grant, CDBG CV funds, for the purpose of meals to decrease in food insecurity for seniors and assist others that need immediate assistance. I understand that uh, Commissioner Wynn would like to be added to that item. Would you like to make that motion? Yes. Got a motion by Commissioner Wynn. Do we have a second? Second. Second by multiple people. Uh, <laughs> We have a motion in a second, but I've got Ms. Uh, Wanzina Jackson here today. I want you to talk just briefly about these three items in particular, not specifics about each one of them yet, unless you're asked questions on there, but just to tell us a little bit about what these funds are for, how we attain them, and how they're evaluated to be used. It will be presented today as far as these particular contra um, contracts that are becoming before you. Uh, these were funds that were provided to us by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and these are special funds to actually um, prepare for, prevent, or respond to coronavirus. So all of these agencies will be required to show how they're actually um, affecting uh, those individuals, how we're impacting those individuals who have been affected as far as coronavirus. The first contract that you have before you is um, the Mills on Wheels. And with Mills on Wheels, um, as we are aware in our community, that a lot of people are um, experiencing food insecurity. They have applied to us for funding, and this is the funding to move forward to help them to increase and to provide additional food um, as far as those individuals in our community that need it. And this will be primarily seniors as well as those individuals that may have disabilities. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Commissioner Wynne, did you have a further question? When in particular, I wanted to say how much I support this because Meals on Wheels is not only a, a, an, a, an agency to give out meals, it's an agency to reach people because some of these people never t to see anybody during the day. They're just put away and forgotten about. So not only is it the health part of it, it's the mental health part of it to see people and get food to keep them healthy. I, I wish we could give them 250000 okay? But... It's a hundred thousand. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> well, I mean, if we have it, and yeah, I'd like to do that. I don't. I don't know that we have it out these funds here, but there's certainly an avenue to get that on the agenda if you'd like to. Yeah. I've always, I've always been one when I was campaigning that kind of picked on Meals and Wheels and, and used them as an example. But I really believe they're a very valuable agency and help our seniors so much. So I do support this. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Commissioner Watkins. Thank you, sir. Um, again, I'm excited to see that uh, Mills on Wheels is receiving these funds. Um, I would like to be added as a co-sponsor as well. Yes, sir. Um, earlier in the year, I know Mills on Wheels approached us with a proposal that was about uh, $1.8 million. That so I was curious about how what's the difference in terms of how many folks are being served and how is Meals on Wheels covered that gap? Because in that proposal, there was an issue with vehicles and some other um, items that affected their ability to keep moving. So I, so I, I just hadn't, hadn't heard anything. So there was a second grant that covered it because the difference between million and 100 is. We actually big. have Ms. Lattimore as well as um, that is uh, the executive director for Meals on Wheels, as well as um, Otis Redding the Third. That's the board um, president. Uh, as far as that association, I'm not sure if they're ready to speak on that particular portion um, for today. For our particular section, it is just including meals um, at this particular time. And we will look at um, what t um, Commissioner Tillman, as well as um, Commissioner Wynn, has asked about as far as that increase. Well, how, how much money was in the total CDBGCV allotment for us? Um, so the total um, CDBG um, allotment was a little bit over a million dollars. And to date, we've expended how much? Um, we have a current, we have um, additional contracts that are actually out there. I can come back to you and actually tell you this is the amount that we have actually expended. We do have um, some of those in the, some of those agencies that we will be coming back to you that have decided that they would not like to move forward as far as the process. So we will be coming back with those. So I would hate to give you a number and not give you the appropriate number as to what has actually been expended because we do have a couple of agencies that will not be expending those funds. At this point, is there a, an additional 100000 in the account? 
Um, oh, okay. I will look at that. Um, I know off the top of my head that there is an additional 50000 but I can't say that there is an additional 100000 off the top of my head. I would have to look um, as far as those numbers are concerned. Okay, so I'm tracking you right. At some point in the last year, we've encumbered the, the full amount of the funds. It's whether or not organizations have spent their full amounts. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Ms. Wynn, you had a follow-up question? Ms. Jackson, and just for a clarification, the 100000 we're talking about here, you, what, what is this going to be used for? Is it food? Is it, is it uh, transportation costs? What is it that it's been or Um, It's actually a combination. Um, it actually primarily deals with the food prep um, as far as the organization is concerned. Um, it also uh, deals with um, the handling and the actual overseeing of the project. So, uh, And then anything that deals with the gas, so all of it is in some way or for um, some form or fashion, either direct services according to the meals or something um, as far as indirect, as far as the delivery of um, maybe gas toward that. Um, it may also be um, individuals to actually do delivery. I know that they continued their service throughout COVID or as far as I know they have. Yes, they have. And, and I just commend them for doing that because this is so important. If you do find there's another $50,000 there, will you let us know? Well, right. I'm sorry. That's what that's what I was saying. There is another fifty thousand. I was not sure if there was the hundred thousand that was asked. In addition to the hundred thousand, another fifty. Yes. Okay. Well, you you do know that, or you don't know that? I do know that. I'm not sure about the other additional amount. Let as us far know. As, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. On that too. Okay. okay. Uh, and we do keep up with where the funds go throughout these agencies. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Okay. Any additional questions, Mr. Watkins? follow up uh, how many families are are served now by meals on wheels and with this grant that increases it to what number The actual number that um, that they're increasing is that they're expecting to do an additional 100 um, individuals as far as this particular grant is concerned. $1,000 per person? Sorry? $1,000 per participant? You gotta remember with Meals on Wheels now, this it would be all year long as far as these meals are concerned and everything mm -hmm. else, yes. And that also includes um, any anything as far as um, the actual delivery as well as the preparation and the food itself. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. We do have a motion and second. If no additional questions, all those in favor of this motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, if we make sure we add Commissioner Wynn and Commissioner Watkins to that motion. Uh, we have item B, which is a resolution to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with Big Brothers Big Sisters of the heart of Georgia to provide $16,390 in community development block grant CDBG CV funds for the provision of mental, I'm sorry, mentor programs uh, for at-risk youth in Macon Bibb County. Uh, that's my motion. Can I get it? Oh, I actually will let uh, Mr. Bronson make that motion. Can we get a second? Second by Commissioner Tillman. Any discussion or questions in regarding this item? Seeing no discussion, I'm sorry, Commissioner Wynn, go ahead. I want to ask Ms. Jackson about this too. Do we, where does the funding go here? How do we keep up with this funding and <coughs> how many individuals does it help? What, just give me some background on it. So for this particular one, um, as a result of COVID, that they have had a decrease <coughs> as far as mentors um, that are available for this particular program. So for this one, they will be utilizing the, um, the funds to do um, deep cleaning. Um, as far as their facilities concerned, they will also be um, assisting um, as far as doing marketing to try to get people back in as far as actually doing the, mon uh, the mentoring uh, as far as those youth. Uh, the other part of this will actually also go to um, supplies and then anything that will be needed as far as sanitation as the mentors are actually meeting with the different youth and everything else. This one, um, this particular contract is um, in response to COVID as well as the prevention of COVID. I was going to ask you about that too. Was it in response to it? And yes. going forward, this is not a lot of money, but um, still want to make sure it's being used for the right purposes, mm -hmm. as intended under this uh, this COVID, the CDBG. Um, 
instructors are, are volunteers, is that correct? Yes, they so, are volunteers. So, so you're, we're seeking the volunteers to come back into the program. Correct. So that's what your marketing would try to do. Yes. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Any further questions? Seeing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries will be sent to consent agenda. Item C is a resolution to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with Crisis Line and Safe House of Central Georgia to provide $30,000 in community development block grant, CDB, CV funds for the provision of hotel accommodations, meals, household cleaning and sanitation supplies, medical supplies and prescriptions, and service for those involved in domestic violence situations for all lawful purposes. So I'd like to make that motion. Motion by Commissioner Bronson. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Pro Tem Clark. Any questions of Ms. Jackson regarding this particular item? Commissioner Wynn? And just give us a little background on, on how this funding will be used. So for this particular one, um, as a result of COVID, they have had an increase um, as far as those individuals that are fleeing domestic violence. As a result of that increase, um, one of the things uh, for the shelter itself is the, um, the way that the shelter is set up that in some instances prior to COVID that they had families that shared rooms together. Well, as a result of COVID, that is not um, a logistical thing that um, as far as that facility can handle just to try um, is in prevention of COVID and everything else. And there's also been an increase as far as the cost of food, uh, as far as that facility is concerned, um, just with the increase of people coming through. So we are looking at the option that is something that is eligible as far as finding hotel space for those individuals and then also providing grocery for them as well. Yeah, you answered my question about the need for hotel space because the families don't stay together anymore. Correct. How long do you think that will continue? Do we have any idea? Um, I will be honest with you. I think that it will depend upon um, how our numbers look uh, as far as our community is concerned. Uh, that is one thing um, as far as the Depa Department of Housing and Urban Development that uh, now, based upon your community and based upon the numbers, they have put together a data set. And based upon that data set, these are the requirements as far as social distancing and some of the other things that we need to adhere to uh, as far as our facilities and our programs that we're providing funds to. I would certainly like to think that, that our numbers of people using this program are decreasing, but I'm not sure. I don't know if it's been better this year or, I you know, last year was probably the height of it. But has it de decreased at all this year? Um, actually, to be honest, there was um, a little bit of, di of a dip, but the numbers have gone up, um, especially dealing with um, domestic violence as well as those individuals that may need additional services um, as a result of unemployment, um, as a result of COVID, as well as um, those individuals that have been impacted as far as having COVID and have not been able to return to work and need different services. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Thank you for uh, reaching out to our, our office ahead of time with those questions uh, so we can have Ms. Jackson here today prepared to answer those. So we do have a motion and second. I'm sorry. Another item? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Commissioner Tim. Uh, we can move forward with this and I can ask okay. her. We have a motion and second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries will be sent to consent agenda. You have a question this time, Commissioner? Yeah, yeah I didn't want to prolong that. Uh, and it's a little bit uh, off subject, but uh, it coincides with this. Because um, we're talking about CDGB grant money and funding. Uh, I think it was about a couple of years ago when the Crystal Lake apartment issue happened. We put a lot of things in place. Uh, Dr. Moffitt was involved. I think your office was involved. But in the recent uh, flooding, in Commissioner uh, Howell's district, uh, we didn't hear much of anything. People were calling me, they was calling, and um, we set up, I think, a one-stop shop. Uh, June O'Neill, Shanita Davis was in place, the NACP, so many folks. And it's like um, the system, something failed. So, you know, what, what happened with, with that? Where, you know, the one-stop shop, the folks have an issue like that. The same thing happened with the Crystal Lake. When that happened, we put something in place where people can go. Is it still your office or uh, where are we at on that? If Dr. Moffitt, if somebody can answer. 
That was not my office um, as far as that, but we do have um, agencies that were assisting with both of those situations um, as far as providing services to those individuals that needed it. Uh, as far as the rapid rehousing program um, and trying to assist individuals through that program, that was done on the previous situation as well as in this particular situation as well. So we may not have been providing services directly through our office, but some of the subrecipients who received funds from us were the ones that provided the services. Mr. Mayor, I bring that up because when Pilt Pokes here is talking about giving out funding to agencies that's of this magnitude, it was something put in place. And I'm sure your, uh, your office probably received some calls as well because of some stuff even happened on the, in the Riverside Hotel. You know, is that still standing? Uh, Commissioner Watkins, do you know? I mean, you and Dr. Moffitt and others work so closely. We set all this up through the Salvation Army. Where is it that people call us to go now for uh, this? Because I would assume that it was when Zena's office. Chris Tillman, I'm not sure about the funding, but I will tell you that our EMA department uh, was in charge of this. Spencer Hawkins, the director, worked hand in hand with Salvation Army, made sure all those residents had a place at Memorial Gym, that we put them up for a while, helped provide the much needed wraparound services for them during that time. Uh, There's some le legal things going on between the uh, particular place that was flooded, uh, the owners and, and the constituents there. They were later moved when, in cooperation with working with the Bibb County School System to Appling. Uh, so those folks were taken care of. We did get some of the calls, but it, it really wasn't as uh, bad as it was in the central, you know, the previous situation. I think things that were laid in place then certainly made it easier this time. But I want you to know that our, our people stepped up to the plate. Our EMA did their jobs. I'm not sure about the funding that was there available for that, but that was a private, private resident situation. Uh, and we, we immediately began to act in the very next day uh, with providing housing at the Memorial Gym. And I know they got moved to Appling, and those folks have, have um, moved on to uh, some type of a housing through that department. Dr. Moffitt, you have anything to add to that? You summed it up very well. Okay. Commissioner, uh, Com Commissioner Tillman, did that answer your question? Okay. Commissioner Watkins, did you have something on that item before we move on? Uh, I was just going to add to that mix that the Red Cross was also a, part, a major part of uh, making sure folks got rehoused and funding that they needed. Yes, sir. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, we're gonna move on to uh, uh, item D, which is an ordinance to authorize a supplemental appropriation from the general fund balance to the Superior Court office budget, salaries and benefits component to the, in the amount of $63,840 in order to fund two additional real estate positions for the remainder of fiscal year 2022. Uh, let's see if our clerk is here to say. Um, basically, I wanna tell you what this is. We're still trying to get caught up at the clerk's office um, our Superior Court, Erica Woodford, has asked for additional funding for the rest of this year in hopes of getting caught up because of the uh, long time that they were closed down uh, during the COVID situation and real estate uh, continues to lag behind. Uh, we are uh, proposing these temporary positions to get her through the fiscal year and we can revisit this at the uh, appropriate time to see if there's a need for additional funding in next year's budget. So that is my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Tillman. Any question regarding this item? Mr. Jones. I know COVID was a big factor, but I hope that department will be much more efficient and competent in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. We have a motion and a second. No further questions. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and will be sent to the consent agenda. Uh, we have one final item. I'm not sure if there's a need to go into executive session today. I do not believe we do have one. So this is the final item on the agenda right now. This is equitable, diverse, and inclusive community. Item 7A is a item sponsored by Commissioner Watkins, uh, resolution confirming Macon Bibb County's commitment to create an equitable, diverse, and inclusive world-class uh, community. Uh, sponsored by Commissioner Watkins. You'd like to make that motion, sir? Uh, yes, sir, so moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Watkins, we get a second. Second by Pro Tem Clark and Bronson. <laughs> Anyone to be co-sponsored as well, Commissioner Bronson? Thank you. Uh, we do have a motion and second. Before we take a vote, uh, we'll have Commissioner Watkins explain to the uh, commission what this is, the purpose and intent, if you, if you so choose. Commissioner Watkins. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so as you stated, this is a, on his face, is a, this is a resolution that is confirming making Bibb County's commitment to create an equitable, equitable and diverse community. Um, I know I've, I've shared, and I think all of us have served in making Bibb County for a long time and are somewhat aware that a lot of data points show that through whether it be geography, race, or gender, that um, 
in several places we're not as equitable or as diverse in terms of the outcomes that are, that are created for our citizens as we may desire to be. Um, and so this is laying out a commitment to work on that issue um, by firstly having us join GARE, the Government Alliance for Racial Equity. Um, it's a leading organization in the United States on assisting local governments with creating equity plans and systems to, again, assist in serve, making sure we're serving what are traditionally underserved communities. Um, and also within this is laying out that not only are we joining it, but we'll put, put together a leadership cohort, hopefully of our, ourselves, department heads, um, to learn the information um, that GARE teaches. They, they do it through seminars, webinars, and convenings, somewhat like we see with uh, the Georgia Municipal Association or ACCG that we're a part of. Um, <coughs> Um, and so the, and the rest of it, uh, the rest of the document that you see kind of goes into detail of what they call applying the equity lens looks like. Um, it lays out some dates and timelines, and, 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 but that is what we would learn through GARE. That is um, the, kind of their process of, of, of development. Also, in terms of money, um, I don't talk about it much, uh, mainly because of COVID and we've been kind of busy, but I've had the privilege over the past year of being what they call it, E Pluribus Unum Fellow. Um, it is an organization started by Mitch Landrew, the former mayor of New Orleans and also former lieutenant governor of Louisiana. Um, its, its mission is to, again, get governments, uh, particularly in the southeastern region, uh, to get more comfortable around the issues of race and, again, those issues that make us uncomfortable to talk about by providing us with the necessary training, language, and a way to look at data that's a little bit more developed than what, what we've done so far. Um, and our organization is willing to pay for us to join GARE and also got to talk a little bit more about what the size of our leadership cohort would be, but there is some willingness for them to pay for our staff and us to go to trainings um, as it relates. So I, I yield at that point for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. We have questions. Pro Tem Clark. I just want to say thank you for bringing this forward. I think it's a great idea. And, and Mr. Mayor, I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. Yes, sir. Appropriate. Commissioner Jones. Yes, sir. I'd, I'd like to ask the sponsor, what's the difference between equity and equality? Can you, can you tell me the difference? So real briefly, I, I'll try to be. Um, so equality is, I think, what, we, what we've learned since the 40s, 50s is the equality of all of us have the same opportunity, making sure that everyone has access to the application, that, that there are no, all doors are available to everyone. E equity is paying attention to the outcomes that are created. Um, so it's not, equality is ensuring that all kids have access to our public school system without any discrimination. Equity is paying attention to that uh, poor kids in our system or black kids in our system tend to have poor outcomes than wealthy students and figuring out how to make adjustments in our system um, for those types of things. Um, it's just looking at the outcomes versus the, looking at the back end versus the front end when we're making policy decisions, or including the back end in, in, ter in terms of that. That's a question from Mr. Jones? Yes, I've got comments when others have questions. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, we'll entertain comment. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Wynn, you have I have a question? a question to the sponsor of something you just said. Do our children not have equal access to public schools for education already? Uh, and if if not, what do you what, where what are you talking about? So again, I think right now we've ensured that our kids, all all students in Bibb County, have access to go to school, but for whatever our outcomes still tend to be different. Um, kids, that's, a, that's a deeper dive correct. into the subject. It's than a we, much deeper dive. We Equi can't. The equity lens is a much deeper dive into what we do and what we do. It's just not being content with putting it on the table, you had the opportunity. It's ensuring that folks 
are benefiting from the services that we're providing. And if they're not, finding ways to tweak our services to make sure that outcomes, because we want, we want everyone to be able to read in our city. A illiterate city is a dangerous city. And right now, through our best efforts, we, cre we create pockets of our community that consistently are illiterate. So focusing on the data points and solutions and best practices that will address that is, I think, what an equity lens tries to provide. It's not diminishing the fact that our school system has done anything or didn't do anything. It's just adjusting to try to make us better. I, I think success or non-success lies in things beyond the school system. Our children all have access or should have access to public schools equally, equally. And to say that there's things going on that keep those children from being successful is not the public, the, the education system's fault. It goes beyond that, and you know that. And it's something that I'm not sure that we can resolve as, as a community. I think that, the, that it's, it goes back to an individual and what they can do in their own lives. And education is a key to success. It doesn't have to be great wealth, but success and just finding, finding a role in life and having a place in life and having the right, the good things that you need for your life. So education is key in that. But don't blame, the, we can't blame this, this problem on education. I don't think you're doing that, I'm not saying that, but I think we all have the same access to that, all our children do. It's what they do with it, what their families help them do with it. It's the um, support they get going forward through this. So if, 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 if I may, I wanna just change it to a service that we do tend to uh, at, with the county. So a couple of weeks ago, I was looking at Channel 13 and there was a boil water advisor, mm -hmm. right? Um, I read it just fine. But I do know that there are several Latino Spanish speaking citizens in our community. Mm -hmm. One of the things that kind of the equity learn lens has shown me that for citizens that are again not Spanish, it would help us and help them not drink dirty water if we were a little bit more deliber deliberate in our service deliber delivery and providing in those communities that we know of, it's not everywhere, but it's very pocketed, things in Spanish, like right? that helps, that helps. Um, it's not a big ask for our community, but it is helping those who are traditionally underserved, who traditionally don't get information for it, from this. And it's, it's things like that by just thinking a little bit more as we are implementing programs that can, instead of it having 500 people in attendance, it can have the, so, the so you brought that up. How do you handle that? So exactly. Um, How do you handle that? Spending more time, um, right. just like now with our garbage carts. So we know that we have communities that are primarily Spanish speaking in those zip codes, making sure that we've also had it be in dual language, whatever that language is. I, I assume it's Spanish for the most part. But just a little bit more of that would help folks know what day the trash is supposed to be picked up or whatever correspondence. Right now, we don't do a great job of that, but, but part of that is because we don't really have these types of conversations. Um, and that's what this is just asking department heads, and it's training folks to just be a little bit more cognizant of those types of things as we're making our, our rules. Again, that gets into an um, individual situation, and I think the, the Spanish-speaking community has enough bilingual people there to communicate things like this to their community. And uh, we certainly want to reach them, and I think we have the people in that community that can do that. Th thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Well, we have a question from, or a comment from Commissioner Howell who hasn't been heard from, so I'm gonna move on to Commissioner Howell, if you still have a comment, sir. Yeah, I just wanna say, I, I took kind of a deep dive into this when I was looking through it, and I wanna point out that the very top of the resolutions uh, talks about the commitment to create equitable, diverse, and inclusive world-class community. That was about the last time I saw the word equitable or equality in this thing. And I wanna, I wanna caution everybody that there is a huge difference between equ equity and, I'm, tar I'm, I'm bad with words, e equity and equality. And I challenge all of the board to pay close attention to that. I, I consider what we've talked about on this um, committee meeting today. There's a lot of things that we've passed as ordinances that were mm -hmm. 
equity related, not equality related. Um, as Commissioner Tillman alluded to flooding, we have, um, that was not, it's not equality what we've done with flooding because it doesn't affect everybody in our county. Um, most of the money that I've seen us spend so far today and in the past with uh, CARES Act money or American, uh, with the money that we received is uh, equity, not equ uh, equality because we, we dole out. Uh, I feel like that this commission is doing a very good job dealing with equity actually more so than equality. If we were, if we were splitting the money between the districts, that wouldn't hardly be fair with the, I guess it would be fair, but that's not what we need to do. So I don't know that I have a, a real heartburn with this ordinance. I just, I would like for us to talk about it more and, and have a, I don't like to, to pass an ordinance that doesn't have a clear, concise plan of action and what we're gonna do, what we think it's gonna cost and how we're gonna implement it. I, I agree that I, I agree that we need to work on it, but I feel like there's it, not any. With all due respect, there's a lot of words here, but I don't really see any any meat into into what I'm reading. Um, so I that's kind of where I'm at with this. I understand what you're saying, but it's convoluted a little bit trying to confuse equity and equality as the same thing, and it's not. Thank you, Mr. Howell. I just want to make thing, one thing for sure clear that there is no funding requirement in this. I spoke with Commissioner Watkins on there. Uh, previously, they had a committee formed together and they, you did an RFP, RFQ uh, out there and it came back with some funding requirements. There's no funding requirement on this and he, he's actually using uh, his relationship through the fellow to, to fund any needs that we have on this item. So there's no funding. So I just want to answer that question without making an opinion. Mr. Bronson, you had a question or concern? Um, so I, I, I think in this case, right, is what we're trying to establish is, is a way of means for us to take the blinders off, right? If, if, if right, we want to take the blinders off. It's, it, it can't be a situation of, oh, well, it's just black and white. There are more uh, cultures out there. There are more citizens out there. There are different uh, groups out there that live in Macon, Georgia. And what we're trying to do basically is identify, right, and at the same time build some type of bridge of communication to where everyone feels included, right? Everyone feels included. So I, I, granted, we kind of went down the route of education and I get it, but that's now the, the primary focus of what we're trying to do here. We want to ensure that every commissioner, right? Everyone that's, that's in this room, that's not in this room, feels a need and a desire to want to live in Macon, Georgia and feel safe in Macon, Georgia and feel included in Macon, Georgia. And this act here is just more so saying we identified it, we know there's a need for it, and and let's make that piece of it happen. I mean, we're not we're not saying we recreating the real, right? I'm sorry, recreating the wheel, but more so. I mean, heck, Bill, we we've served down on House and Avenue. We see, right, the citizens that come to do that. They're in need. Um, I'm not sure when the last time you've been down House and Avenue or the last time you've been in East Macon. But those are things that we don't, some commissioners have not been to certain sides of towns. Well, not right now, but I'm, but I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure though. Um, but <laughs> in some situations, it's just an opportunity for us to really to, to come together. And that's why we're creating the groups. Uh, Commissioner Watkins already identified that we'll create leadership groups throughout that will have citizens come in. Uh, different commissioners, different leadership from Board of Education and so forth that can come in and, and tag team on this. So I think it's a great opportunity here for us to really open the door um, for different cultures, for different communities throughout Middle Georgia and, and, and say welcome. So, Thank you, Mr. Bronson. Commissioner Jones? Yes, sir. And, and to respond to uh, Commissioner Paul Bronson there, I, I travel all districts in this county, and if you check with Public Works, you'll see that probably more than the rest of you combined, I call in more potholes all over the district. And they say, what are you doing out there? Well, that's, I travel the whole county in my business with real estate. So I think, and I hope, I hope and I think that all of us treat all of our constituents equal and help them regardless of any, any, any status or, or color or, or whatever their 
status in life is. I hope and think that's true. Equity, I have a problem with equity. That's kind of a national buzzword right now. And, it, and as Commissioner Howell pointed out, it is not equal to equality. I believe and have lived my life in practicing being equality. That, that, that transcends much more than the schools. Sch schools is that one magical component that can change lives, and, and it does. Uh, equality means equality under the law. It means equality in everything. Everybody has an equal opportunity. I believe in that. And ever since I've been associated with this government, I've, I've not seen one sign that we're not treating people equal with the same rules and guidelines as far as anything that goes on with this government. I've not, I've not seen any sign of that. If, if I did, I would call it out. Just two or three points, uh, you know, and I think of equity, we'll, we'll put it in real estate terms for Commissioner Watkins. Equity is like, it's an, you know, in, in equity like a lot of words, probably all words, has more than one definition. Equity can be your equity in your home. Uh, one pays off a mortgage after 30 years and they've built up an equity or a value in their home. Or maybe it has to do with an old car or a truck that's, that's value. It, it has a value or an equity to it. Uh, equality is, is uh, so it has more than one meaning. But I think of equity as an asset. I have a problem with, you know, this, the word equity is in there about eight times and uh, there's a lot of people that I follow that some of you may know their names, but uh, Bob Woodson calls equity. If you, and, if you and I and two others are in a poker game and I win the pot, then you want part of my winnings. If you know who Bob Woodson from the Woodson Center and people like Shelby Steele, Niger Ennis, Burgess Owens, Jack Reed, Leo Terrell, civil rights attorney, Ward Connerly, president of the American Civil Rights Institute. All of these people don't like the word equity because it's not equality. I believe in equality. Uh, my life has, has represented that, uh, treat everybody equal. That's what we all should do, and I think most Americans believe in equality. Most Bibb County Countyans believe in equality. Equity to me means, uh, you know, to me this creates, even though you, the mayor says it's, it's not asking for funds, I think that's where we're headed. I think we're going to have an extra layer of bureaucracy between the people and their government. And I don't like that. Uh, equity, many times what you see across America is using government to distribute benefits to a group to equals to what they think they deserve to have uh, to me that's a bit that's a better that's another e definition of equity so I'm I'm against I'm against the, uh, it's it's a warm and fuzzy uh, resolution but uh, I don't said equality for all which is what we all stand for then I like that the word equity represents uh, a different meaning to me, so I'm not in favor of it. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I'd like to have a comment by Commissioner Howell, and then I'd like to call the question if possible. Commissioner Howell? Just, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, when I think about the scales of justice, there are three words associated with that. Truth, justice, and equity. That's Our founding fathers came up with that, and equity is what we strive to do. I think when we cross from equity to equality, we move the change, we, we move the playing field, and equity is always going to be someone's subjective view of what is fair, where equality is fairness. And again, I, I don't say I'm opposed with the thought of what we're doing, but the wording of this thing, I think we need to sit down and look at it. I challenge the uh, sponsor to, uh, to table this, or if we call a vote, we call a vote. Thank you. That all the questions? Okay. Well, I got Commissioner Tillman if we're going to make comments. Uh, I, Commissioner Tillman. I'll yield. I'll yield. Uh, Thank you, sir. I'm ready to vote. Commissioner Jones? 
last comment, like when Commissioner Howell talked about, I disagree with him just a little bit on uh, equality. If somebody has a water situation, uh, I, I don't think we're giving them special attention. We're treating them equal to exactly what we would treat anybody else throughout Bibb County. You've got a water situation that needs correcting. I've got one in my district now. If somebody has a, a busted cart, whether it's in Howard Oaks or on Napier Avenue, I'm going to respond to that just as quickly uh, one to the other. So uh, e equality is treating everybody equal. People have different problems throughout the community that are, uh, could fall under our purview to help them with. So uh, that one distinction, thank you. Commissioner Wynn. A lot of discussion going on here. It's obvious to me that we, we should consider tabling this. I'd like to move the table. Motion to the table, we have a second. Second, second by Commissioner Jones. All those in favor of motion to the table, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. nay. Ask for a vote. I'm on your hand. Raise okay. your hand if you voted no. I'm sorry, Commissioner Bronson. Quick deal here. So I'm. I'm we, we have. We have. A, we have. It's not a discussion, right? No, not a, not a case. We have. We have an up or down. So all those that voted nay, raise your hand. To not table. <laughs> okay. Voted yes. To table. Does that mean I break the tie? Okay. So I vote nay. So let's let's take a vote on this. Um, we have a motion and a second uh, on this item here. So if you want to do a roll call vote, if you want to do a call vote, that's fine. Hold on, let's kill. Is that Tillman? Okay, go ahead, Tillman. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, sometimes uh, we just never know what issues uh, with or without funding will uh, uh, raise a certain amount of, of conversation. And so I'd just like to chime in when I think about equity and equality, what we're talking about. Uh, when I look at equity, we thinking, we're talking about giving everyone uh, tools to be successful, primarily. Uh, when I think about equality, it just means treating everyone the same. That's what the federal court system is for and has allowed. Hearts and minds coming up in the 50s and 60s and so forth did not change. The court system changed it. And that's sort of, sort of what happened. Uh, years ago, before I even became a commissioner, I served in other capacities. We would have these conversations on race and politics, which is often sometimes uh, touchy and people don't want to talk about. So this is what Commissioner Watkins is saying. He spelled it out. These are tough conversations that we all should begin to have. And a lot of times we feel uncomfortable having those conversations. Why? Because we know that the federal court system has deemed and people have fought, marched, and died for the issues that have been wrong as it relates to uh, equality and equity. Prime example, Mr. Mayor, every year, most mayors around the state of uh, Georgia and throughout the country uh, that have been uh, white mayors always have attended and are speaking at the annual ML King marches. Now, every employer in most states and federal government are off, but the disparity in the numbers that we see is almost sometimes at 98% versus the 2% of our white counterparts and others. Why is that? Here's a man that died for equality or rights for all folks. And so when we're talking about equity and equality, that's simply what it's saying. Let's begin to have a conversation that the school to prison pipeline is real there's some folks that's not benefiting as they should. We're not giving them the proper tools. This government has done things under your administration in impoverished neighborhoods that have been publicized and seen, and those are the things that we should be doing. And we see it and we notice it in this uh, commission because we publicize it. And so uh, it's not a bad thing. The federal government has sent down funding and money to say things have not been equal with the uh, disparity in the COVID numbers. So now we're going to benefit a certain segment, whether they're men, women, minorities, or whomever. Minorities equal uh, uh, 
military veterans, women's, and, and those that's disabled. So um, as we begin to talk about it, it's just a conversation. And we want to want to table a conversation. I yield. All right, Commissioner Watkins. Yeah, I, I, and I just wanted to just read one line. Um, establishing a vocabulary that will ground making Bibb County and the community in a shared understanding of the term equity and related ter terminology. So part of what Gary will provide us is, you know, be able to have this conversation like experts. Um, but it's just not the one word equity and equality. There are a lot that goes into this. There's, there's the conversation about redlining um, and a host of other things that I feel like even if we're gonna disagree, we all need to be clear on the baseline of what the word means and what its history is in our community. Even if we disagree or may even think that it has some good traits, uh, I think it's important for us to be able to have fully fleshed out conversations. Um, but yeah, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Pro Jim Clark. I'll be very, very brief. I just wanted to thank everyone, no matter how we are going to vote and how we voted to table. Um, this conversation has been above the bar in disagreement, and it is. Um, incredibly refreshing as an onlooker of years past to this commission and this body. And uh, it, I think it bodes very well for how we work with each other and I think the public notices that. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, one more comment and I won't beat a dead horse, but thank mm -hmm. you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I, I think that my reason for wanting to table is because I do want more discussion actually beyond this. And I think that if we untabled it later brought it back to the table later that we would between that time we would have time to talk about this because I think there are too many discussion points and, and questions about it but I, I didn't want to shut it down right. that's what I want you to know I wanted to shut it down right this moment but bring it back up later for a full discussion and a more under better understanding Commissioner Jones last comment we don't need a resolution to have a good conversation and and commissioner tillman knows that personally because he and i've had good conversations about race and other things so i'm always open to a good conversation with any of the commissioners thank you thank you commissioner jones any other questions just real quick, um just process wise since we're not um since it seems to me that this will not be a unanimous or seven to two vote um, we will, this will not be on the consent agenda next week. And, um, and just if it, for, if I'm reading the room wrong and it is a unanimous vote, I would absolutely, um, commit to, uh, pulling it off the consent agenda for further conversation. Thank you, Mr. Clark. All right. We do have a motion and second, uh, no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed nay. Aye. Is that four to four? Okay. I vote aye. So it passes five to four. Okay, that concludes our business today on the equitable, diverse, and inclusion community. I do not see the need to go into executive session at this time. Uh, anyone has any point of personal privilege, now will be the time to do it before we adjourn. Go Braves. Uh, go Braves and go I will I say Commissioner Wynn has her pearls on, on today. today. She's clinching them. Uh, Commissioner Howard, do you have something good to order? Uh, yes. Um, these days, it seems to be a moving target in my district as to 247, the, gr <laughs> <laughs> the great news is we're open one lane in both directions today and hopefully that relieves some of the traffic. However, I would like to point out, since I live on Hartley Bridge Road or very close to it and deal with it, we do have a beautiful four lane road called the Sarters Church, uh, Sarters <laughs> Church Road Connector. Please, if you live out that way, it's a whole lot easier to go down that road than it is two-lane road of uh, Hartley Bridge Road. So just keep that in mind when you're out that way. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Howell. Commissioner Water. If getting to the uh, incentive going out in uh, January, just wanted to uh, say I'm getting a few calls and people running into me and saying they're still not clear. And when they ask HR, they're not really getting an answer on uh, whether it will be uh, uh, the retirement. Yes, uh, let me clear that up. I think there has been some miscommunication this last week uh, for, for I don't know what reason. The incentive pay that we in instituted um, for the public safety, first responders, et cetera, will include retirement. There's been no, no confusion on our part on that. We've always said that. I think the confusion comes 
down to the thousand dollar state pay bonus that the governor or, or state has uh, decided that each uh, certain classification of folks will get a thousand dollar bonus that's not us paying any money that's not part of your retirement so we don't have any control over that uh, my understanding I've heard back and forth that they're gonna try to net that out to equal a thousand we don't have any control over that we're gonna we're gonna apply for the money which is what we're obligated to do and we're gonna pay the money based on the guidelines they set up um, uh, under state so that th the thousand dollars there will not go into retirement we have no control over that our incentive program that's going to be uh, determined December 31st this year and paid uh, the second check at least in January will be factored into for retirement uh, we said that all along as part of their pension we want them to be able to average the last three years of there to to get their their pension there so that that's a clear and easy answer on our behalf thank you for clearing that up water uh, Commissioner Jones glad you brought that up mayor because I've had a couple of deputy sheriffs ask me specifically about that and I assured them that was the case so my request would be for, for you to ask the HR director to send that to all the people that it applies to assure them of that fact because we continue to lose people in law enforcement and, and fire protection they're hiring some but they're still losing some so that, I know that's a question that has circulated around law enforcement in particular. Yes, sir. We, we, we spoke about this the uh, last couple of days. We'll be sending out a letter to everyone for the second time. We, we made it very clear in our other resolution, but we'll, we'll make it sure. uh, more clear uh, on this occasion. Commissioner Tillman, you want to close us out? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for clarifying some of these things. One of the things is that we're not saying is the governor is causing some municipalities a headache. Uh, by implementing this. This does not go to everyone. It only goes to public safety uh, members and they have to be uh, certified. And so folks calling us like crazy because it's so much confusing. And so we're spending a little bit of money and maybe we ought to be asking the government to send us some administrative funds. So we got to send out letters to clarify and clear up something that he tried to do as a good intention, uh, but it's kind of backfiring on uh, municipalities around the state of Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're certainly going to meet our obligation. We don't determine the regulations, but we'll, we'll follow whatever regulations and guidelines are out there. So I uh, appreciate everyone for being here today. We'll be off uh, until next Tuesday, of our, our meeting next Tuesday. Uh, we do have a vote going on right now. The OLAS early voting has already begun with a final vote on the 2nd. Uh, we have a Making Matters event next Wednesday. I'm sorry, tomorrow. Uh, if you um, are interested in going to the chamber and local delegation function there, uh, several other items that we'll see in the next couple of weeks. So and look forward to our time together next Tuesday and this meeting is hereby adjourned.